Good evening and salutations, my b, &B fans. So, while Steffi is feeling all sorts of foolish for forgetting her passport and everything, and Finn is not there trying to make her feel better, Hope the Homewrecker is just lurking by the door, acting like a creep, sees both of those two making out, and walks in and acts all surprised, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It was like, no, you did. And what do you think Hope does when she gets in there? Oh, she decides to sit there and get Finn involved in business matter of Forrester creation. Telling him, oh, by the way, just to let you know, your wife is not trying to cut funding to Hope for the Future. Are you kidding me right now? This is when I sit there and say a homewrecker, this is what I mean. I don't just mean the fact that she's not there trying to sleep with him and practically, you know, have eye sex with him every chance that she gets. But like even things like that, why would you get him involved? Why would you get why would you first of all, why would you be sitting there talking business to him? He doesn't work at Forrester Creation. And you did that to put him in the middle. Maybe it was to sit there and try to get under her skin because, you know, Finn does have this habit of, you know, stepping in it, defending her to some extent. And he came in with his two cents, where, which is just like, bro, your two cents is necessary. Like, it really isn't. And I saw what he was trying to do. He was basically sitting there saying, well, you know, I, I trust your decisions or whatever you make for the business. And, you know, she's rightfully, understandably angry or upset that her line feel like it's being cut. And it's like, yeah, that's cool, Finn. But uh, you didn't need to really sit there and say any of that because, well, you don't work there. So, <laughs> like, again, why are you talking? But that's the thing about Hope, you know? Hope was not there hitting on him before. What do you think that's going to, what do you think that's going to want to happen with his marriage and his family? Oh, it doesn't matter because it's about her. It's about her and what she wants. Same thing with today. Put him in the middle of it. That's supposed to be a friend. You put him in a compromising position. Like that's some selfish shit right there. Um. They find out. Oh. And of course, Steffi again is like, "This isn't personal. This is business." You know the sad part. Because I've seen people sit there and try to defend her by just saying, well, it is personal. At the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. The numbers do not lie. And I am so, you know, I am so sick and tired of people, including Finn, sitting there saying, well, you know, she needs time to balance back in the line since Thomas is going. Cool. What's her dumbass decide to do? Oh, well, you know, that was Steffi's fault that he left. No, 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 no. This is what we're not going to do. Okay, you are you are too old. You are too much of a so-called grown-ass woman to be snipped there, placing blame on everyone else. Okay, at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. Okay, your line is doing very poorly. And so Stafford was like, "Listen, we're not even snipped there talking about necessarily cutting it. We're just talking about scaling it back. Let's bring it back. Bring it back a lot. Space if you have to. I don't care. Just." Bring it back to sit there and save the company some money because at the end of the day, like she says, she's responsible for keeping the lights on. She's not responsible for coddling you and trying to make you feel better about business decisions. Now, people can sit there and say, well, that was cold and that was unprofessional. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Okay, business is business. It's not personal. And if she can't sit there and handle it, maybe she needs to sit there and leave. You know, she actually had the audacity to sit there and say, well, I'm going to stop you. Uh, I'm sorry, when did you actually run this company? Because you don't. Listen, I have my issues with Steffi. So it's not like, oh, I like Steffi more. I like Hope. I like Hope. No, they both done their fair of looking like a bunch of jackasses. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yolanda's is doing bad. Either scale it back or cut it in general. I don't care. This isn't about you, Hope. Um, and she's all like, oh, well, you know, our parents are away on this. You know, just trying to throw it in her face and everything like that. I was like, bro, come on. Like, again, you really want to sit there and be petty, Betty, because your line isn't working out? 
Really? Oof, okay. You know what's amazing? Will has been here for two days and already he's found a way to just annoy the living shit out of me. So he comes in there with Katie and everything like that, and after the hugs and everything like that. She's all he's all like, what did he say? Hold on. Oh, this entitled jackass was like, who do those who do those people think they are since they're trying to take over our home? Well, you haven't lived there in years. Shut your mouth. And Katie has not been the lady of the manor in forever. So again, shut your mouth. Like seriously, it's just it's so petty. Now, on a level, as much as I do not like this kid so far, because I think he's like what eighteen or something. He did the things that he was upset with him for how she, how he did treat her. How Bill did the thing treat her back in the day. And that that's something I, I can't, like, yeah, I totally get that. But he did the thing say that he does look up to him and he does love him and everything like that. Um, you know, he's all like, oh, well, it was weird and stuff like that. And it's like, I think either he said this or she said this or whatever. But um, it was something along the lines of, well, let's just hope that he still remembers us or remembers you or something like that to Katie. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, sweetheart. He was the one that was trying to get Mom Dukes back about a whole two years or something like that. She didn't want to come back. That's her fault. In all reality, I don't know if he's, he's just one of those people that just want his parents back together, but that's not how life works. And you're not 10 years old. Like, seriously, he just... He just comes across as so annoying. Like, he really does. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to the interactions between um, Will and um, RJ because, you know, their dads don't like each other. RJ doesn't like Bill, which, to be honest, I'm like, bro, listen, that's your parents' beef. That's not, that has nothing to do with you. Every time he comes out of his mouth and says, well, I don't like Bill because of my parents, like, shut your damn mouth. Like, their arguments, their issues and stuff like that was well before you. Like, you can just sit there and shut your mouth and just kind of stay in your place. So it's not like he's getting off the hook on that one either. Now, Poppy and Luna are sitting there making excuses for that POS and they're saying, oh, well, you know, it's his first time back and it's kind of jarring and everything like that, so... They decide to leave, give them some space, and on top of that, they got to sit there and pack up their stuff from the place that's going to get torn down so they get there, right? Luna's looking for a tablet. And so while Poppy's packing, she's looking around and everything like that, she comes across Tom's backpack, right? Tom's backpack. Opens it up. Don't know why. Opens it up. Start reading inside the letters and stuff. Realize that Tom kept just saying that Luna is my daughter. So now she's sitting there looking at Poppy like, what's, what's, what's going on? This man is sitting there claiming that I'm his child. Now, if you saw the previews, you know that she finds a way to sit and explain it away. But curtain is going to start to get lifted. Although on Poppy, um, not being, I, I just want to understand how. I want to understand how did they fake that DNA test. Because Lee has, God has been in it. She has to. Poppy didn't sit there and switch that test at any point. Unless they decide to add in a scene, which to be honest is, is BMB. So I'm not going to sit there and put it past and sit there and, you know, try to, well, Make a kind of shitty storyline <laughs> to, to, just to put it mildly. I couldn't sit there and think of a nice way to put it, but I can see them doing something like that. Now, the stuff with Sheila and Deacon isn't really that interesting. She's just regretful for not, um, you know, looking in at Hollis' claims about the backpack and everything and, you know, realizing that this is an accident. Somebody sat there and murdered those two. And, of course, Ridge being, you know, feeling bad that Stuffy missed a flight. But Brooke is like, you know, let's just make the best of it. Um, cheers them up and everything. And then they get to wherever they are. And they're a little mini Cooper or something. So they're going to go on some sort of adventure or something. I don't know. Uh, 
I don't know. If Spen- I don't. I was about to call him Spencer. I don't know if Will Smith is saying there's something off about them or whatever. I think it's just more the fact that it's just jarring, um, which I don't really understand why. It, it seemed like they did tell him. See, that's the whole other thing. It's not like he didn't know. He came in there and he was like, "Oh yeah, I found I found both of those two together in bed or whatever. I found both of those two. I was like, "Well, what would you do, sit there walking in his room without knocking?" Seriously, you you knew Poppy's existence. You knew about Luna. First of all, I understand why it's so drawing. Like, oh well, maybe it's it just would have took some time or whatever, a little advanced warning or something. It's like, bro, you had plenty of time to sit there and you know, kind of figure all that stuff out. So this whole whining thing isn't working for me. And again, don't walk in your parents' room unless you want to sit there and see something you shouldn't be seeing. All right, I think that's about it. Anyway, if I miss anything, you know what to do. Come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk about all the shows. Born and the Beautiful, Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, and General Hospital. With that being said, I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'll talk about all the shows. Um, if I miss anything. And I'll see you in the next video, or hopefully live stream.